Well, if you're an electronic hobbyist like me, you definitely have to do some desoldering. Really two main ways to do this. The first, of course, is the old solder wick. This stuff can get kind of expensive if you do a lot of desoldering, and it does have its limitations. The next, of course, is some type of a solder removal tool, a solder sucker, if you will. The disadvantage, of course, with the desoldering wick is, A, it's kind of expensive, and B, you use it up as you desolder things. The solder sucker, while on the face of it looks like it would be a tool that would not have any parts that need to be replaced, well, that's just not true. The tips have a tendency to blow out on this tool. By blowing out, I mean that a tip develops a groove or an actual hole in the side of the tip after it's been used for a while. This particular tool is a Radio Shack unit, which may or may not be available since so Radio Shack has just about gone out of business. The Radio Shack tool is identical to the ECG tool. ECG also sells replacement tips for this tool. A pair of replaceable tips will set you back about eight bucks off of eBay, including shipping. Here's an unused tip, as well as a tip that has had a blowout. They both came out of the same package. So they're the same age, just the one on the left has never been used. After buying two new tips, I found out that after about a day's worth of desoldering, I'd actually blow a tip out, which means I had to regrind the tip down, then my contact area goes up, and I start making a mess desoldering. So I started thinking about it, trying to figure out a better way of doing this, and here's what I came up with. What I have here is an old tip that's been drilled out to one-eighth of an inch, then I'm using two pieces of brass tubing, one telescoped inside the other one, and a set screw to hold it all in place, and an upper gasket on top of it. And I'll get into all those details here in just a few seconds. What I found out was after you use a tip for a while, you start losing your seal on the top of the tip, which means, of course, some of the suction can leak out between the tool and the tip, making it much less effective at desoldering. The trick here was to get a short piece of 18 gauge solid copper wire and bend it around in a circle and that created a new gasket that totally sealed up the air gap that was there making the tool 100% functional again. The next step is to drill and tap the old now drilled out tip for a set screw. In this case I used a 3 millimeter by a half millimeter. The reason I picked this size was it's readily available in electronic equipment. A whole lot of screws used in your VCRs and TVs are this size. Here's a close-up of a drilled and tapped tip with the brass tubing inserted. Yes, I've used this one for quite a while. You can tell by the discoloration and the solder on the end of the tubing. Here's a shot of a brand new tip, one of my modified tips with the brass tubing inserted. And then the other tip we looked at previously that I've ground the tip off. When you're drilling and tapping your hole, obviously you want to make sure you don't get back into the gasket seal area. If you do, you'll start losing your seal and your tool will not function near as effectively. Now one of the brass tubing I used. There's two sizes, 1 8 inch and 3 30 seconds. The 3 30 seconds does telescope inside the 1 8 inch as I've shown here. Both are available off of eBay and you can probably find it at most hobby shops. K&S Brass is the manufacturer that makes this brass tubing. You'll need two sizes, 1 8 inch and 3 30 seconds. The 1 8 inch tubing is about 450 for a 12 inch piece. The 3 30 seconds is more expensive and probably around 750 to 8 dollars for a 12 inch piece. In my case I had some of this tubing left over after another project so I didn't have to purchase anything. Now you're probably thinking this is kind of expensive if you don't do that much desoldering work, but you don't want to be buying tips all the time either. Luckily there is another option, fountain pen refills. The big one shown here is an eighth of an inch, the little one is 3 30 seconds. And yes, they telescope inside each other just like the other one did. It may be possible to take the larger fountain pen refill and just cut the point off the end of it and give yourself a hole there for desoldering. And no, I have not tried this since I already had the brass tubing, but it's something you might want to look into if you get into the situation. 
I can pretty well guarantee that if you've got a lot of old fountain pens, you've got one that's no longer writing that can be used for this purpose. And here's a couple shots of my modified tip inserted into the desoldering tool. This one works quite well, and as you might guess, just from the way it looks, I've been using it for quite a while. Well, I'm pretty sure I heard someone say, okay, yeah, that's cool, but does it work? In this case, this is an old board that came out of a printer for a stepper motor drive. The first thing I'm going to be desoldering here is a transistor that's out on the end of the board. You'll note that uh, basically you take the tool and, and push it in until the solder starts to melt, and then wiggle the tool back and forth a little bit, release the bulb, and then move on to the next one. In this case, it's pretty quick. You'll see this transistor comes out fairly easy here in just a moment. I've generally found that these tools work great on single layer boards, a little bit much less so on multi layer boards. In this case, the transistor had the wiring bent over underneath the board, so what I had to do is use the tool to bend the wires back straight in addition to desolder the wires. And it takes a little longer when this happens. Using my telescoping tubing idea makes it pretty easy if you get a blowout on the tip. You just come back and take the little Dremel tool and grind it back down smooth. As you no doubt noted in the photo, the inner brass tube is longer than it needs to be. I did this so I can put it in the vise and just slide the inner tube out just simply by loosening the sit screw. That means, of course, the inner brass tube, the 332nd tube, is the only thing that's a consumable item in the tip approach. This next item I'm removing from the board is a crystal or a resonator for the microprocessor that's on the board that actually controls the two stepper motor drives. This particular item came out much easier since the resonator was just soldered directly straight into the board and other tabs are bent over underneath the board. And as you can see here, with a little bit of wiggling, it comes right out. As you can see, this redesigned tip works great for single layer boards. For double layer boards, you're probably going to want to hang on to some unmodified tips like came in the original pack. They do transfer a little bit more heat. If you're liking what you're seeing, uh, give me a like and consider subscribing. I just might have something else coming down here real soon you're going to want to see. The king in the video just might be gone, but don't let that be you too. So come on back and see me real soon.